Alright guys, welcome to part 3 of building your own computer. Now before we actually get into the motherboard and its details, I need to clear something up with you guys. I am providing this guide as a basic kind of underlay so you understand what the different terms mean and stuff like that. When it comes down to selecting individual components, guys, just look up the benchmarks, look up reviews and look up like roundup things where they compare all lots of different ones you need to look these things up because i can't tell you off the top of my head if whatever motherboard is good or if this that or the other is good or this graphics card is a good buy just look them up for god's sake you know what i mean like the, the information's out there you don't have to ask me and keep bothering me about it because if you do ask about some things i might respond but generally i won't i just won't give a fuck I mean, I'm providing a guide to give you guys a basic knowledge and understanding. If you want to know more about specific things, research it yourself. I had to do it for all the computer parts. Alright, but now let's just continue with this and move on to the motherboard. Now, this is the single most important part of the computer itself. There is a lot of terms and a lot of things in this. It is what everything connects to. It is the single most important part. If there's a limitation on the motherboard, it limits your computer. In other words, if you want to use, let's say, a solid state drive and you want to get the max speed, you're going to need a SATA 6 capable motherboard. If you want to uh, SLI, you're going to have to get like, we'll go through all these things later. But the motherboard is the limiting factor of your computer in the sense that if you limit it in the motherboard and you buy a better part, you won't be getting the full performance out of it. For this, as I said, the example is the SSD. If you buy a, a fast SSD that requires SATA 6, but you only have SATA or SATA 6 gigabits and you only have SATA 3 gigabits, you're going to be limiting the speed of your solid state drive. That's what I mean. So you need to buy a motherboard that fully supports all the parts that you're planning to buy. It can get a little confusing and generally there's a lot of chopping and changing with the motherboard. But we'll talk into that later and get to the actual terms now. Okay, so now you can see a basic picture of a motherboard. This happens to be an Intel board. However, for our purposes, we're going to be focusing on the AMD Gigabyte 990FXA UD. Now, the reason I'm focusing on this board is it's because I, it's the one I use and it's the one I favor at the moment for AMD processors. I don't have much experience with Intel, but the only real difference between the two in terms of motherboards is the socket type and the chipsets. Now, we'll go into what they are, but most of the things such as SATA, PCI and all that kind of stuff stays pretty much the same. Okay, so now that we've got the actual diagram up, we're going to look at some of the major components. Now, the first thing we're going to see is the big black square thing with the arrow pointing at. That's your CPU socket, and we've already covered some of the basic ones, but that's the AM3 Plus socket, which is backwards compatible with AM3 2, 2 Plus sockets as well. Now, the Intel boards have a differently shaped socket, but it's pretty much the same layout. Now, we are going to go into, first of all, the PCI slots. These are the black slots down along the bottom of the board with the arrow pointing to them. Now the PCIe slots, which is this one here, is a Time16 slot. Now they come in a few different varieties, but essentially PCIe 2.0 Time16 mode means it's a Time16 slot with 16 PCIe lanes. Now we'll get into what controls the amount of lanes later, it's the Northbridge chipset but we'll, we'll come to that in a second. But essentially what you need to know is that this is your graphics card slot and you want as many time 16 mode time 16 slots as possible. Now you can see that this motherboard has four slots of that length but the problem with this is that there is two time 16 slots which have 16 lanes. Now they're often called in the spec sheet on the site the time 16 mode and the last two slots are actually times 4 mode which means they support time 16 cards but they run backwards compatible in a times 4 mode with one quarter of the bandwidth. This means that you're essentially you're slowing your part down. So I have two times 16, 16 mode slots which means I can now use them for running multiple graphics cards at the same time. You want as many as you need for graphics cards. Ideally, I would recommend two, because this allows you to add on an extra graphics card in the future. 
Now, if you're going for the multi-GPU route, you need to make sure your motherboard supports AMD, Crossfire X, or NVIDIA SLI, depending on which manufacturer you go with. Now, I mentioned there just a second ago about the Northbridge chipset. The Northbridge is the kind of the line from the CPU to the other components. Now, what's directly linked to the Northbridge chipset majorly is the PCIe slots or the PCI Express. Now, what this actually means is depending on which Northbridge chipset you get, is how many PCIe lanes. So you said there, I or I said there, I had 16 lanes in two cards and two cards with four lanes. That essentially means my total lanes is 40 PCIe lanes. Now there is a one-time slot there as well with one PCIe lane, which is useful for connecting up capture cards and stuff like that. Just make sure that any card items, network card, capture card, graphics card, you have the right amount of slots for each one. Uh, that's generally about the PCIe slots and make sure if you're buying if you're going down the dual GPU route make sure at least you have times 8 times 8 mode in other words you have 216 slots and it'll say times 16 times 8 or times 8 times 8 mode in SLI or two-way configuration is what it'll say in the spec sheet that'll allow you for multiple graphics cards in the slot as there is no Technically, there's no actual difference between a time 16 times 16 and times 8 times 8. Uh, there is a difference, but there's no actual performance hampering as the graphics card currently can't quite max out the time 16 mode at the moment anyway. Now, so you may remember these cables, these big, great, flat, space-hogging, ridiculous-looking ribbon cables. They're what's called PASA technology, and they are obsolete nowadays. Um, some of you may end up using a second hand or an old DVD burner or DVD drive and it might be PATA connected which is parallel at advanced technology attachment. Uh, generally the most of the time though you don't even need these. My motherboard doesn't even have a PATA slot on it anymore. They're often referred to as ID as well. Now PATA has been replaced with the much more modern SATA connector or serial ATA or serial advanced technology attachment. They're a much smaller little cable, and these are what the ports look like on the actual motherboard. Now there are a few flavours of these as well. They are come in three forms, SATA 1, 2 and 3. So SATA 1 is SATA 1.5 gigabits per second now. The gigabits per second is how wide the actual bandwidth of the cable is. The second one is SATA 2, 3 gigabits per second. And SATA 3, 6 gigabits per second starting to notice a pattern here. Now the SATA ports can support other technologies such as RAID which is what we'll get into in hard drives but just note that a RAID stands for redundant array of inexpensive discs. Yep gotta love them engineers <laughs> with their great acronyms but anyway the SATA ports come in those flavors. Now the reason you need to know which speed they are is that SATA one will support hard drives and stuff like that. Um, essentially, the best hard drives at the moment can max out the SATA one uh, bandwidth. 90% of the motherboards nowadays that support the modern processors will always have SATA 3, 1.5, no, 3 gigabits per second, which is really good. It's really fast. It supports all your hard drives. It'll do everything you want it to do. Now, if you're looking at solid state drives, which are essentially very expensive hard drives, they're about 100 euro per 60 gigabytes of space at the moment, but solid state drives are incredibly fast. We'll get into the actual solid state drives themselves in the storage and hard drive episode. But essentially, if you're buying a modern solid state drive, you're gonna want a SATA 6 port. Now, SATA 6 can backwards support SATA 2, uh, SATA 3 and SATA 1.5. I'm referring to speed. But the SATA 3 port, 6 gigabits per second, will backwards compatible SATA 2 and SATA 1 ports as well. I use SATA 3 and 6 interchangeably. It's a bit confusing, I know, I'm sorry. But the SATA ports are essentially what connect everything to it. Now, another thing you need to keep in mind is that you need as many SATA ports as the amount of hard drives you're going to use. For example, I use, I think, four hard drives at the moment. I'm getting another one in the mail tomorrow. And I also have my DVD drive, 
which connects to a SATA port as well on the motherboard. Now on the 990FXA Gigabyte board, it has six SATA ports and all of them are SATA 3 ports. Now another type of SATA you may see is on the back of the motherboard. Now this port is commonly found on laptops and this is called an eSATA port. There's one on the red side to the left there as well. Essentially what an eSATA port is, it stands for exterior SATA which means it's a port that's on the back of your computer that allows hard drives to connect up externally to it. Essentially it has all the same terms as SATA and speed. Now these are often commonly found on laptops and they're often combined with a USB port so they support both technologies and they're often called eSATA USB. Essentially it allows you to use a faster SATA cable than use a slower USB 2.0 cable which could limit the speed and transfer of your hard drive for exterior ones. Uh, if you're planning to use exterior drives I'd recommend going with eSATA if possible. Now the next port we're going to talk about is on the back of the computer. These are your USB ports. Essentially there's two flavours of USB nowadays. USB 2 which is everything has one of them and USB 3. Now USB 3 is the new 5 gigabits per second USB connection which is very fast. This is generally used for hooking up external hard drives or very modern ones and it's also used for hooking up uh, capture cards such as the Black Magic Intensity Shuttle, I think it's called. Uh, when it comes down to it, your USB ports just get as many as you need, and you can always use an extender hub anyway if you do need more of them. Now, another set of ports here are the audio ports. And see that funny black and grey lad, the second one in from the right or the left hand side? That's actually an optical port that's used for Toslink or as it's often referred to as SPDIF as well. This is an optical audio cable. There's one coming out of the back of your console that's uh, used to connect up to your headphones. So if you're using a pair of headphones like I am, which take optical surround sound, you're gonna wanna look for one of those so you can use it on your PC. Now the ports I'm pointing at are your simple analog audio out ports. They're basically from the onboard sound card. Now see that blue and purple port on the left? I mean green and purple. Now that port is the old, I think they're called PS2 keyboard ports. Essentially they allow you to hook up a really old keyboard or mouse if they don't use USB. Uh, for example, I actually use an ancient from a Windows 98 computer, big chunky brick of a keyboard that I've hit many times in rage mode without breaking it. So I like that and it plugs into one of those ports. It's absolutely ancient. Um, all motherboards will have these. But you know, 99% of you won't use it because you will be using USB keyboard and mouse anyway. So the last port we're going to cover is these long thin slots, and these are your RAM slots. Now your RAM is your random access memory. So the basic thing to understand here is that you need to support DDR3 240 pin RAM, and that's pretty much it for a RAM. Now they come in different speeds and timing, and there's a lot of other finicky little details. But you know, when it comes down to it, you do need to get DDR3 RAM now. As for speed, that's the frequency of the RAM. I personally use 1600, although I think it's 1033 is a standard RAM speed. It'll work, you know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to RAM, speed and stuff isn't really uh, that important. What you want is as much RAM as you can get. I'd recommend going with 8 gigs of RAM if possible. Uh, get a good quality RAM such as Corsair, Vengeance, Dominator, I'm sure there's lots of other makes of RAM out there that are solid. But you want to get as many slots that are required. Now, when it comes down to RAM, there's a few terms and there's some motherboards support what's called dual channel and triple channel. Essentially what this means is that in a dual channel board, if you plug in two sticks of RAM into two slots, you get better performance than one stick of RAM. And if you plug in in a triple channel board three of the same stick, you get better performance. So on a single channel board, one 8 gig stick would perform just as well as two 4 gig sticks. However, on a dual channel board, you'd be better off getting two 4 gig sticks. However, on a triple channel board, you'd probably be better off getting two no, three 4 gig sticks. Now, when it comes down to the amount of RAM, I recommend 8 gigs because Personally, I, I cannot get over 7 gigs of RAM consumed. Uh, if you have 4 gigs of RAM would be the absolute minimum. 
but RAM nowadays you can get 8 gigs of RAM for 50 euros which is an absolute steal. Like my 8 gigs cost me 80 euros at the start of the summer and the fact that it's dropped by 30 euros, almost half the price now is ridiculous so RAM is very cheap, it's well worth getting. Now the last thing I want to touch on is compatibility with SLI and this is generally to do with the chipset. If your motherboard is called like an NVIDIA uh, 870 or whatever the feck NVIDIA chipset made are made, generally it supports it. However, when it comes down to it, sometimes those chipsets aren't very good. Uh, for AMD I'd recommend just getting a 990FX chipset. Uh, the 900 series are licensed to work with SLI very well. I believe the Intel P67 and Z68 I think they're called work well. There's a few different Norbridge chipset when, chipsets when it comes down to it, but I do recommend getting one that will support multi-GPU. Uh, the motherboard is something that if you skimp on the motherboard and CPU, uh, you can't really upgrade it that easily. You can't upgrade without having to reinstall Windows or your operating system, and it can get very hairy. So I do recommend uh, you know, getting the support for everything you want in the future. It may cost you more, but it's probably going to be worth it in the end. So that's it guys, I suppose, for the motherboard. As always, it's been good talk, and I'll see you out there.